Greetings, travelers, and welcome to Geronimo Draws Sketch Cards. Hope everybody's doing well. Oh, man. Oh, man. We have some epicness that arrived. The Easter Bunny came early. <laughs> he came on Saturday evening, and my goodness, <laughs> with a big, big basket. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everyone had a wonderful Easter if you celebrate. Um, man, oh man, this was such a nice surprise uh, to get uh, when I came home Saturday evening. My goodness. Uh, let's see real quick. Let's see who we have here in the chat. I feel like it's been a while. Isn't that strange? <laughs> it really hasn't, but it feels like it. Uh, Cole King, what's going on, my man? He goes, the vinyls look sweet. Ah, thank you so much. Really appreciate it, brother. Really appreciate it. Revan Saber, what's going on? He says, salutations. Greetings, traveler. Good to see you. Good to see you. And we have Elk of Antioch. He goes, hail Lord Zeno and hail Princess Zena. No Chiron Morvel today? Come on, Elk. Come on. Can't leave out Chiron Morvel, the warrior of light. <laughs> All right. So I will be drawing a sketch card of Chiron, but there's a couple of things I want to show you guys before we move forward because... The campaign right now is at 75%. Oh my goodness, we're getting closer and closer. It's, oh, it's killer. It's absolutely killer. But tremendous thanks to everyone who's been sharing it and backing it. 118 backers. I'm blown away. 118 backers. This is crazy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can't wait. <laughs> 51 USD away from 7,600. We can do it. Come on, folks. If you're watching and you have not backed, get yourself the vinyl first off with the comics because the vinyl's going quick. Only 24 left, folks. And 20 days left to the campaign. Um, this is the next chapter in the Blood Realm series. We have uh, Christian Rossi, Juan Sanabria, or Sanabria. I <laughs> Depending on the day, I say his name wrong or right. <laughs> and then, of course, we have Keir Covington. Epic, epic story. My goal here is to tell one unforgettable epic uh, that you guys will just hopefully return to. So I can't wait to share it all with you guys. So link is in the description, of course, if you want to back the campaign. And also get, let me show you now, show you this. The vinyl. Let's see. <laughs> All we need is the Geronimo signature on these bad boys. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I figure, I think maybe gold or maybe the bronze looking marker. I think that'll, I think that'll be really nice, right? Just Geronimo here. Uh, I, I was extremely impressed with everything. Um, really blown away. And then we have the back right here. So this is a seven inch vinyl. And it sounds great. Um, went quite went through a couple of uh, test prints to make sure we had the right uh, sound for the stampers and everything. But we got the track list side A and B. Oh man! And uh, yeah, we have a, a theme for each of the old beasts that appear in Wrath of Kings. But this cover, I mean, come on! <laughs> come on! <laughs> it's too epic. <laughs> I was so excited when I saw these. You know, this is it's like whenever I get new books, you know, when I order new books for of my own, you know, like or when Pete sends me the books, I'm always like, Oh god, please look good, please look good, Lord, please let this look good. <laughs> and then I open it and I'm like, Oh, it looks really good. <laughs> See of all that is obvious. Hello, I have traveled far for this drawstream. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The lands of Mordrin are treacherous. Thank you so much for coming all this way. I will be doing your commission tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. I believe that that was your commission, right? If I'm not mistaken, Seer. But anyway, I've received a commission to draw a resurrection scene. of um, uh, The resurrection scene, I should say. Not A. <laughs> the resurrection scene. Um, uh, with Jesus. So that'll be really epic and fun. I was getting a lot of inspiration from Simon... Beasley's drawings. Oh man, he did some epic biblical art in a collection for heavy metal way back. So yeah, I was getting in some inspiration for that. Yes, that was me. Okay, so you said great. 
And the cover is metal. Metal. Oh, I agree. And hey, what's up, Kiri? Says Blood Realm. Also, guys, look at that custom label right here, folks. Side A. We got the Geronimo Draws logo right here. Stereo. Okay. Copyright, of course, by yours truly. Music composed and performed by my buddy Stephen James. And here we go. You can see a little bit. Look at this. So it fits. The aesthetic look at this folks look at this look at this opaque red and there's just little hints of black splatter if you can see it let me just make sure this is nice and in focus here we don't want to play around here uh let's see is this uh is this better or worse that's better oh there we go that's better okay now we're in focus here so yeah oh man i am just so thrilled so Track one, Blood Realm. Number two, Iron Wolf Suite. We have Argus, God of the White Wood. And then on side B, we have Valgus, the Devourer. We have Gorgum, King of the Arachnids. And then the Ode to the Iron Wolves, which you guys, most of you have heard. I have to say that video is doing very well of, of the Ode to the Iron Wolves theme. So that is currently on my YouTube channel. So if you want to give it a listen to get a little taste of what's in store um this is the only one that has i would say lyrics the others are orchestral but this is an actual uh chant that the wolves sing in the actual comic so it is part of the universe so if we're going to have any types of songs unless it's some type of metal themed album that's inspired by the series this is a thing that is actually in the actual comic it's part of the story okay so here we go, folks. So again, uh, they have arrived. They are real. They are not fake. Let me just get this in there. Oh, man, so exciting. I am just thrilled, 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 and thrilled. Amazing. 24 left, folks. So if you want to get yours with the comic, oh, man, now is a good time. Now is a good time. You know what? Let me show it one more time since now we're in focus a little bit better. Let me just get that in there so now you guys could see. Hey, Pass Master Dan, what's going on? Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, this cover was drawn. The head was different, but I drew this creature on Geronimo Draws Live. So that's what I love about this is that, you know, you never know what happens with this artwork that's made on this channel. So I remember we had a spider prompt, and now that ended up being the art for this back cover and also the one of the old beasts, Gorgum. So it's fun that all of this stuff has a purpose and goes somewhere, you know, within the universe of Blood Realm. Of course, we have Captain Lycurgus here with his sword, ready for battle against Valgus the Devourer. Ah, so exciting. So there we go, folks. Thank you so much in advance for those of you who, who uh, have not backed and you're going to. Um, but if you have backed, well, thank you tremendously. Thank you infinitely. Because I cannot wear, I cannot, I cannot wait to share the rest. That's right, that is correct, Paul. He remembers. He goes originally Phaedron the Old Beast. Great art. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, well, we, I will be revisiting a Phaedron design, uh, without a doubt. So we'll see. William C. Hello. Uh, let's see. Oh wow. He was like uh, William C. Hey Rob, everyone. I own the original Spider art. Holy mackerel, William C. Good to see you. That's fantastic. Wow. <laughs> That's the thing, right? I mean, you end up getting inadvertently, all right, you get the art, but you never know where it could go. And that ended up becoming the art for that back uh, back album art. So there you go. Ah, oh, William, good to see you. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Great to see you. All right, so I'm just going to switch up my camera real quick. So I want to bring this a little bit closer so we could get this closer to the card. So just pardon me one moment. All right, I'm still here. Don't worry. It's all dark in the universe of YouTube right now, but I am present and I have returned. Aha, okay, I'm back. Uh, let me just now adjust the focus on my camera so we could get this new card right there. Okay, perfect. So if anyone is also interested in this card that I will be drawing, again, you never know where it will end up being <laughs> the way things are going. Uh, that is available uh, by clicking the link in the uh, chat and also my website. So I, the card that I have in mind today, since 
you know, we just had Easter, right? So I, I was thinking triumphant. I didn't want to go too gloomy. So I was like, you know what? Let's draw up. Let's draw Chiron Morva with a shield. And we have Siegebreaker, a flame as he's holding it up. And his knights behind him. Silhouettes of the knights with some spears. You know, leading the army of light. So that's the idea for today. Okay, let's see. Oh, Cole King. He goes, after seeing it, I may have to get a few more. Oh, my goodness. I know a couple of people have gotten more uh, than one. And I understand. <laughs> I had to put a couple aside for myself. I was like, I'm not making the same mistake I did with some of those first printings of the comics. <laughs> uh, anything goes. Good to see you. Three-foot sword is always an interesting weapon to fight 100-foot tall monsters. Well, you know, uh, they never see it coming. That's the thing. Anything goes. They're never ready for it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, White Alakazam, good to see you. He goes, just got my pages and crab card. What size are the pages? I need frames for them. Uh, I believe they're 11 by 14. Yeah, 11 by 14, the original art um, for those. If that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, it's got to be. Mm -hmm. Ah, excuse me, I got my seltzer. Oh, and thank you, Pastmaster Dan. Yes, hit the like, folks. And if you have not uh, subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Um, we're going to have Tyler on again with me tomorrow when I do that commission. Um, Sierra of All That Is Obvious commission of the resurrection. So I'll be doing that tomorrow. And of course, Tyler and I will get into some nice theological, um, uh, philosophical discussion. So I'm really looking forward to it. He's going to join me tomorrow again. And all right, let's get right into this. So one thing I'm going to share with you guys, since you guys are here with me right now, I'm going to show you it now. And since we are drawing Chiron Morville, there's something cooking for a stretch goal. Okay, we got something cooking for a stretch goal. The stretch goal is 12,000. So the goal that we need to fund this entire crazy operation is 10. But the, the stretch goal is 12. And if we get, if we get the $12,000 stretch goal, um, we will unlock. All right, let me get it right now. Let me get it. We will unlock a special perk. Very limited. Okay, very, very limited in the run that we're doing of these. This is going to be a premium, premium object. And I'm going to show you it right now. Hold on to your butts. And let's see. Okay, well, this is a good angle too. Ooh, it's too good. Too many good angles. Um, I'll show you a bunch. Here, get ready, folks. Are we get are we getting swords with the stretch goal? Uh, almost. So for the stretch goal, ladies and gentlemen, okay, we are talking a high quality, high quality. I know I'm, I'm, I'm you're like get it get it out already, Geronimo. Come on now. Well, we're gonna get a high quality statue of Chiron Morville. <laughs> That's right. High quality resin printed statue of Chiron Morvell. Not hollow. Solid, solid sculpture. Um, there's going to be a limited gray amount and then an even more limited translucent red. As far as, as uh, things aren't official, but I'm, it's going to be some type of red. So gray for those who may want to color it and paint it. And and then um, red as someone who oh you can still paint the red you can you can certainly still paint the red um, but this is illust this is three D printed oh excuse me uh, designed rather by Shadow Punk uh, he did a, a little bit of it online and he did a remarkable job the detail is absolutely insane I have seen test prints and. We got Chiron Morvell here with his logo of the Iron Wolves on the bottom, a cracked surface there. His knees bent and he's wielding Siegebreaker. And it is a flame. He managed, managed to get the flames in there. Let me show you guys another angle. It's, hey, what's going on, GJ? GJ, GJ, good to see you, my man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah just, just take a look at this angle. Um, I'm not playing around with this campaign. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I, 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 I want to do all these things, the vinyl, this statue. Folks, um, 
I, and I, like I said, I have seen some test prints and we're talking like a little over five inches. So it's going to be a premium, premium statue here. And Chiron's there holding the sword. Like I said, you got some of the flames there, the cracked surface there, and he's got his legs bent. He's twisting. He's ready to just stab and impale uh, maybe Archdemon Targanis or something like that, right? And we have a lot of texture and detail on the sculpture. He just did a phenomenal job. Let me show you one more. So this is when we hit, God willing, we hit the 12,000 stretch goal. These will be unlocked. And then after that, um, there'll be the gray and then there will be, um, oh, here we go. Yeah, let me show you guys this one. This way you could see the top view of the sculpture. Uh, then the red, the gray and the red. How many dollars? Well, that I'm still working out because I have to figure out the, um, the cost of everything completely, but uh, not outrageous. Not outrageous. I'll have more details as we get closer, but this is just a little tease. Uh, so there you go. There we go. Five inches may make him a giant in D&D scale, but real DMs uh, will make it work. My dream has come true to have a Chiron Morbell finally for me in my house. Yes, please, GJ says. I remember way back. I remember, GJ. You were saying, when could we get that done? Well, it's possible now. We can do it. We can do it. So, there you go, folks. I can't wait. <laughs> 12.35 bid. <laughs> uh, Paul says, order up those commissions. Still plenty left to get closer to the goal. Oh, thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Yes, uh, sketch card commissions are available on the Indiegogo campaign. So, can't wait. How many kidneys is that statue worth? Oh, my goodness gracious. Ah. Uh. Yeah, so you guys are the first to hear about it. You guys are the first to see it. And yeah, that's that's where we're at, folks. I, I'm, I'm very excited and I truly believe uh, that after, after you guys uh, read the new volume and you read the origin of Chiron, I really feel like you're going to, I don't know, I think you're going to be really impressed and just have a whole new respect and interest in Chiron because now he'll have this tremendous epic story behind him that, um, I don't know, in my opinion personally, I just feel like in the best way possible, it'll, it'll just enhance everything. So, yeah, uh, it, a lot going on, folks, a lot going on. I'm trying to give you guys the, the, the stuff you wanted, you know, and the stuff I would love to see. I mean, heck, I, you know... I'd like to see this stuff too. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> what a hobby, GJ says. Unlock it. And he has to do the math. Life hack. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so a lot going on. And I'm, I'm honored and thrilled that you guys have been so receptive and so excited about the project. I truly cannot wait to get all this out. Oh, it's just so exciting. This is a very exciting time for Blood Realm, I have to say. There's just, I don't know, there's something in the air with Blood Realm right now. And, you know, you guys know I'm no BS. You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting this stuff out to you. You're not going to wait 10,000 years <laughs> for your stuff. You know, that's not how I operate. You know, you're getting your stuff. And we got the proof here with the vinyl record. I showed you the 3D model. All of this is coming. All of this is really being made. And it's just so darn exciting. I just can't wait. I can't wait to give you all this stuff. And I'm so tremendously honored. I can't say it enough that you guys are enjoying the series, are reading the series, you're following the storyline. It's just ugh, absolute honor. It's so tremendous. All right. So now what up? my goal here is to get Chiron here. With the Iron Wolves behind him as he lifts his sword, giving a, a call for battle. I'm going to put a shield here as well. And I just want light bursting. Bursting. Um, oh, thank you, GJ. He goes, my favorite character has always been Chiron Morvel. Ever since I saw his design in your comic. Man, I'm so damn happy to hear this. Oh, I'm honored, my friend. Honored. Honored, honored, honored. And, you know, I was thinking, I was like, you know, 
the way shadow punk designed it i was like this can't just be a tiny sculpture like this has to be even pete i was showing pete he was like this has to be premium that's premium you know this is a premium premium uh, statue so um and i just like the idea too of trying to get the the translucent red or some type of red as a limited edition and then we'll have the the gray for anyone who wants to paint it and uh, <laughs> the idea of that of you guys painting uh chiron that's just oh i can't even i can't even imagine that's got to be insane insane so yeah we got a lot going on a lot going on guys a lot going on so, oh my goodness <laughs> Thank you so much. I think GJ just got the, he just got the car. Oh, smoke. what a day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I started reading. I assumed he was all uh, over the place with him being the face of Blood Realm. Surprise. He only had like one story and wasn't in more. Glad to see him get more. Oh, I'm so happy that you, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. Um, it is pretty wild when you think about it. Uh, but people, the readers gravitated to this character, and it's tremendous. Um, oh, thank and GJ, it was you. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Thank you for getting today's card. We're going to make this positively epic. Positively epic. Uh, let's see. When does the Targanis one unlock? Translucent black for him would rule. Well, no, that's the thing. Let's see how all this goes. You know, right now, the vinyl stuff, the the, the action, well, not the action figure, that may be one day, but the statue. You know, I told Shadowpunk, I was like, you know, not for nothing, if this goes well, we could get, like, a, a, another posed character, like Targanis, just staring each other down. And, like, really, like, who is he actually going to fight? You could put him in front of that. Oh, no, Rob is, Rob is roboting. Oh no, I'm roboting? Oh no. Let's see, let's see. Uh, oh, thank you, GJ. I don't want a robot. Let's see. It looks like my internet is unstable connection. Oh, always something. Always something. Okay. Good on my... All right, how about now? Now it says I have a stable connection. It looks like I had a couple of windows open and maybe my computer was about to explode. Let me know how I sound now. Let me know how I sound now. I know Paul says good on his end. A little spotty internet there in that moment. Way better. Okay, yeah, it looks like maybe I had some windows open. I wasn't aware and I guess it slowed down the internet. My goodness. You would think... We wouldn't have to do that, worry about stuff like that anymore. <laughs> but we do. Uh, sounds fine now. Great. Yeah, Alterna runs a lot of short comics. You've got to have some great stuff to print at least 20. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I'm thrilled and I'm so excited and I cannot wait. This is like a... Oh, no. Screen was all pixely and auto-tuned Rob. Oh, my goodness. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, so we got some wild stuff cooking, folks. Wild stuff cooking. And, you know, hopefully this is just the beginning. Hopefully this is just the beginning. I can't wait. Can't wait. Okay, so I'm just going to put some red paint here so we could get some base for our shield. There we go. So we break that border there a little bit. And again, we're going to put some cool silhouettes. Some cool silhouettes here of the Iron Wolves in the background. And now let's, let's get our brush pen here. All right. Let's get him all inked up. Yeah. There we go. So very exciting times, guys. Very exciting times. And truly, truly so honored and appreciative of all of your support. 
Now you guys are really the ones who are really helping making this happen, to be perfectly honest. There we go. Can't wait for the vinyl, Bachwinkle says. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It's 14 minutes of music. My buddy Steve and I, oh, mostly him. I got to give him most of the credit, of course. He's just tremendous. I just gave notes and stuff. He just, you know, he really took it to a whole nother level. Um, he did such a tremendous job. 14 minutes of wonderful music, in my opinion. It's just epic stuff. Um, some of it feels like really cool boss music as well when you think about um, each of the old beasts, like before Lycurgus has to go down and find them and hunt them. The very immersive stuff. And who knows, like I said, you know, this could go to, to other things. We could do a second printing of a pressing rather in another color. And then we can do different types of albums, different themed albums. Like I always mention how I love, my dream was always to produce a metal album, you know? Yeah, we'll be able to do it. Here we go, look at that. Holden Siege Breaker Aflame. Is the vinyl for this campaign or was that from a prior one? That is from, for this campaign. So I printed those suckers early. <laughs> the reason being you have to you have to have everything ordered in advance with with vinyl pressers. Um, because not only are vinyls are just so vinyl records are so in demand right now. Um, uh, everything has to be in advance and it takes time to press them and make the stampers. So so I, I, I knew I was going to do this and I took the shot and I said, you know what? I always wanted to do this. I'm just going to I'm going to I'm going to see what happens and let's see if people like this. I'll just do the 100. Uh, I have a feeling people would dig it. So here we are, you know, so that's why they're here early. Uh, let's see. Uh, GJ says, uh, I've yet to back your campaign, but I'm doing it soon enough. Uh, much needed housework to be done. Oh, I understand. A wonderful team has been working on my home for the last few days. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. Fantastic. Have you ever thought about a Blood Realm tabletop RPG like D&D &D or Mork Borg? I have thought about it. Uh, again, like, you know, I'll have to look into it further. It could be something we do in the future, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, I've, I've thought about it. I thought about that. I thought about video games. I thought about everything. But you know what? We got to start with making the comic epic, you know, and and building the world of the comic first. And that's that's the goal and then slowly that stuff will just happen and hopefully just come through naturally. But I've thought about it. You better believe I've thought about it. Holy mackerel. I was like, "Man, can you just imagine that?" But it's possible we can do it all. We can do it. Ah, oh, there we go, Chiron. I like that pose there. Look at him. He's looking triumphant, leading his men into battle. Uh, let's see. Second printing should always be in white. Ah, oh, for the foam faces that missed out on the first. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, let's see. Um... Did I miss anybody? Uh, no. How many circle boys left? How many circle? Well, circle boys. Uh, 24. Uh, as far as I know, still 24. I don't believe I had any backers since I posted, uh, posted that. So, yeah, let me just double check. Yeah, nothing as of yet. So there's still 24 left. And it's a print a pressing of 100. 100. All right, let's get let's get our shield going. Nice big shield. Take some hits. Little damaged edges here. Got to give it that personality. And thank you for joining me today. By the way, so early. Um, normally I I stream later, 
Um, I wasn't feeling well the past couple of days, so I had to. I have to prep for my a uh, couple of my classes tomorrow. So I have to grade and whatnot. Semester is almost over, thank goodness. Five weeks left. Five weeks left, folks. I am ready. <laughs> I have to say, I'm. Sometimes I'm like, I just want to focus on comic books, but you know, gotta pay the bills. I gotta pay the bills. Gotta pay the bills. Oh yeah. Oh, he's looking cool. Uh, let's see. That's a powerful pose, and it's Chiron. Such an excellent sketch card, Dad, to my collection of your work. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I, I really, I really like this sketch card already. I was sitting there. I was like, ah, you know, I gotta go with the, the triumphant theme of Easter, right? I was like, what can I draw? I was like, I don't want to draw some creepy demon tonight. <laughs> I was like, I need something a little bit more powerful and uplifting. And I was like, ah, Chiron. He's the guy. He's the man. Chiron's the man. Okay. And I'll get back to the comments. I see you guys commenting, so it's always awesome to see that. Okay, let's give some of the line work on Chiron's helmet. There we go. All right. We'll get in there and do some highlights. Enhance some light and dark. It's going to be good. Uh, let's see. 24, the meaning of everything? The meaning of the universe? I guess so, maybe. Uh, White Alakazam says, uh, let's see. Comic and story comes first. That's right. Most important. Everything else is cool, but if the story falls off, what's the point? I agree. I agree. I see so many creators sometimes, right? They'll have one book out. Literally, when I say book, I mean, they won't even finish a miniseries. Well, you know, whether it be at Alterna or whatever, they're already off saying, yeah, you know, we're getting figures made. I'm getting this done. I'm like, like, man, dude, like no one even knows who your character is. They barely even feel connected to them yet. You know, and it's like, uh, like I understand the excitement and I thought about it too, but you really do have to think about, you know, I got to develop the character for everyone to fall in love with first you know that's really the most important thing and i had to control myself as well this times where i was like oh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and then i had to sit there and be like no you know i i, I gotta i gotta pull back i gotta pull back because this is a comic first and people really need to get to know these characters they really got to get to know them to want to you know to warrant someone now spending the the money to to now create all this other merchandise, you know, it's, and I think it's tough, you know, it's, it's easier said than done, you know, you, as creators, we get so excited, we want to do this, we want to do that, it's hard to control ourselves, but it is the truth, you know, it's, you got to remember what you're making first, and you're making a comic, and that's the intended medium, and it's all about your characters, if you don't have the characters, why would anybody care? That you're making figures or that you're making vinyls or you know what i mean like people want to have that history with your character to say oh i want more of that universe and that person so that's my goal that's my goal right now and to pepper these little things out there make them look high quality and is worthy of your time <laughs> let's be real it's going to be worthy of your time that's a big one worthy of your time Okay, let's get some of that there. That's looking cool. A little silhouette of the men behind him. This one a little longer. There. Okay. Uh, let's see. What I miss? What I miss? What I miss? Um, the benefit of the pulp style short story arc is that you'll always have room to play, and even 
even after you print the final Blood Realm issue. It's true. It is true, I have to say. Um, um, they're, they're like all these little pockets I can explore. Absolutely. And you could go wherever you want. You know, you really can. That's what's so hard. You know, I keep getting hit with all these different ideas. I was writing stuff down the other day. I was like, man, I imagine a story like this, like this. But there's no reason why. You know, everything just needs its time. You know, it's it's hard, but you have to try and to, to pace yourself and and say, you know what, this is the most important story right now, and I'll get to those other things. You know, it's it's hard at first, but you get you get you get used to it. Uh, when I fall in love with a character, GJ says, I like to commission different artists to see their their take on the on said character. Chiron is a perfect example. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've seen you. Uh, commissioned some wild stuff from Chiron in so many different ways. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. It's so cool to see all these other artists, you know, playing in that realm, in that world. <laughs> that realm. <laughs> Pun intended. Okay, so now I'm going to get some more in the distance there. This is the big grand army of the Iron Wolves. Boy, just wait. Just wait. Chris and I have been going back and forth with some of the um, the, the artwork and edits. Uh, we're just so excited. We want to make this as, uh, so absolutely epic as possible, especially this whole scene here in the, in the story when we do see those iron wolves formed and when they reveal themselves as the threat, as this new threat against... The, the oppressive mages. It's, whew. I tell you. He's coloring everything now, and it just looks spectacular. Spectacular. I can't even believe it sometimes. I'm looking at him like, my goodness gracious. The challenge for me is to not, like, <laughs> to not spoil. You know me. I can't, like, I see it. I'm like, you won't believe what I just got sent from Christian or Kier. Okay, so here we go. Let's get some of this going. And also, guys, like I said before, if you're just arriving, if you're curious and you want to know what type of music is going to be on the vinyl, uh, feel free, please, to go check out um, the Ode to the Iron Wolves. That is on my YouTube channel. You can give it a listen. This way you know exactly what you're getting into. There also is a digital bundle as well, by the way, guys, too. So if you're if you're interested, and maybe you know you don't have a vinyl that a, a record player that works anymore, um, you know you could you could also get one that way, you know the, the digital bundle. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, um, what did I miss? Oh, here we go. Uh, anything goes says George Lucas never took White Alakazam's advice, and he did all right in life. Do your thing, Rob. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. I believe you should want your readers to learn more of a character and get to know them to create amazing side rewards. In this case, a figure which I've wanted for a very long time. Oh, that's exciting. That's great. Um, I think I missed something else. Uh, when you live in a mansion and fly private, you'll make it through the sorrow. Oh, meaning with George Lucas. Okay. Uh, Paul says, I'm with Anything Goes. Owning your own airport and hidden volcano fortress will make you forget what crying internet people are saying. <laughs> that is true. Uh, anything Goes says, why sell a $2.5, uh, $2.50 comic if you wouldn't sell a two billion franchise? Oh, Star Wars, right? It always comes up. We can't help it, right? We can't help it. Well, it is what it is. It hurts, but it is what it is. Okay. So I want to get some highlight here. On our man here. Get some of that highlight on him. And 
there we go. Again, because we want the light source to come from the sword. That's the idea. We want that light source to burst from the flame. That's where it needs to come from. So right here. Spot in these little little elements here so we can get that glistening right, that nice look behold the light phantom I have this whole speech written up oh man I can't wait <laughs> this is just so much ah. my goal is to try and not as epic of Braveheart, but I mean, come on, we gotta have Chiron give some kind of speech to his men. Think about that speech that Alexander gave his, his men, Alexander the Great, which is considered to be one of the greatest speeches. I mean, of course, right? But, you know, his men wept with guilt. For doubting him, they they stayed outside his tent and wept and begged his uh, begged for his forgiveness. I mean, wow. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've got a bad feeling. Uh, the mages cut a deal with a certain archdemon to put down an unexpected rebellion. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Uh, let's just say that um, the enemy of, of my enemy is my friend. You know, the mages never dreamed, as you'll learn, in a million years, like Rome, in a sense, right? Or even the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, or even the Ottomans, right? You think of all these empires. You know, they never dreamed that there would be something to come that would break them apart, right? The cockiness, the arrogance. Sometimes they have to make alliances with individuals that they never thought they would. And we see that. We will see that. It, let me tell you, this universe, I'm going to post a picture maybe later tonight or tomorrow of some of the cast of characters that you're going to be seeing. And I started counting them up and I was like, man, this is the largest cast in any work I have ever done. There are so many characters, but not to the point where it feels overwhelming and you have too many branching arcs. Wonderful characters that you meet and some really ruthless beings in this universe that follow gods that require blood sacrifice and gives them dark powers from the tether. And different religions too. We're gonna we're gonna get a little sense of the the type of worship that the the Cyclops clans of Odrigar, what they do. Okay. Uh, now what would I like to do now? I'd like to get a little bit of a wash going. Let's see. Let's get my brush, my handy dandy brush. Um I'm going to do, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a nice little gray wash. Very light. Very, very light. So let's see. A little light wash. And then I'll do splatter. And then I'll tighten something up. And then we'll, I don't know. I, this is this is coming out awesome so far. So I'm very happy with it. Very light wash. Let's see how this is. Um, let's see. Um, is the Y on the shield structural symbolic or both? So, we're going to see before the Iron Wolves become, you know, the iconic wolves, um, th they have different types of shields. But then slowly as they develop and they become more powerful and the people they recruit are, are craftsmen, they, let's just say their armor and their attire gets, gets more and more refined. You know, so we could see the steady growth of the wolves themselves. What I didn't want is that the wolves to suddenly appear as just perfect. You know what I mean? You know, so th th there's, 
like visual development. Uh, that sounds like emotional manipulation. It's alleged Alexander was a very tricky man. Oh, yes, I... When you listen to... You know, you guys could decide for yourself, but he has a way... A way with words, Alexander. He certainly has a way with words. In that speech. It's so powerful. But not for nothing. Considering that anything goes, you think about how young he was when he said that speech. When he gave that speech, how incredibly young he was. That even if he was completely manipulating his men, right? Uh, just how he knew to do that in his 20s. The way he talked. I mean, that line when he says, so you all want to go home, huh? He was like, go ahead. Go back to Greece and tell them that you left your king, Alexander, here in the hands of the people that, that you conquered. Go. Go. You want to go home? Go. Such a fascinating figure. Uh, that's fantastic to hear, Robert. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Zebra Swirls. Hi, Rob. Just wanted to hop on and let you know that my commission came in over the weekend. It looks even cooler in person. Hope you had a great, good Easter. Oh, thank you, Zebra Swirls. I'm so happy it arrived. Oh, beautiful. Thrilled to hear it. Oh, man. Oh, man. That was a really fun commission. Really unique. I got a, I got quite a few uh, people who are fans of that series asking me, like, oh, I, oh, I wouldn't have expected... Uh, a style of this character drawn this way. This is this is really neat, and it was just it was just funny because uh, I you know I was not familiar with that character, but I have to say I have to check it out now. I did do some digging myself. Okay, so let's have some like this background here to show just a little wash. I have to say one thing that has been really helpful, and I had a feeling that was going to happen with the Stations of the Cross sketches. Um, it was like really great practice for atmosphere and kind of giving everything more of a painterly look, you know, because I, I feel like I was really able to stretch my muscles with those scenes, you know, like, yeah, also for Lent, of course, but also just, you know, just to force myself to, uh, I got to be honest, it's uncomfortable, you know, I don't normally draw scenes of Jerusalem, you know. <laughs> Uh, and, and Roman legions. That was really a, a really fun exercise, and I feel like I'm learned some new techniques. And it's amazing what these cards can take. Man, they can really take a beating. It's wild. All right, I got that nice little wash there. Now we're gonna go in. Oh, I forgot about my seltzer. Hmm. Funny, I feel like I'm able to fit more into a card after having to draw multiple characters with the uh, with the station streams. Those were those were challenging. Those really were. But you know what? Gotta get out of that com uh, comfort zone, right? Man, oh man. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So now let's do what should we do first? Let's do the black splatter first. Uh, let's see. Let's do the black splatter first. Here we go. Uh, all right. Okay, so here we go. So let's do black splatter here at the bottom. Texture for the, for the shield, for his outfit. There we go. Just a little bit on the sides. 
just to give some texture. I may do a little line work just to give a little sense of clouds and a little shape of clouds. Uh, let's see, Waldorf Statler. I would have walked back to Greece and told the people he told us to leave him there. Sounded like a direct order or to leave or to live. Who are we to dis who who are we to do do to disagree? Yeah, it's pretty funny. It's not like he didn't say you can't go. <laughs> that is true. Very, very true. Oh man. Okay, here we go. So now let me get my other brush. Where are you? My this is for white splatter only brush. Where are you? I had another one. I had two. A little busy here at Geronimo Draws, trying to sort everything out. But we got it. Okay, let's wet this toothbrush a little bit. Dot it. And there we go. Okay. <sighs> Gotta have the sound effects. Otherwise, what are we doing here? <sighs> Follow me, wolves! <laughs> there is a moment in ah, I gotta stop ah, I can't Ugh, just read it already can't we just have this out ah let's get this going we're so close <laughs> oh, God, I can't I can't say it the moment that happens in one particular battle, it's just, I just cannot, made me fall in love with these characters even more as I was writing it. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is going to be so epic. I was like, they're going to love it. They're going to love it. They're going to freaking love it. In the middle of the battle. Oof, I can't. Stop, Rob. Control yourself. Control yourself. There we go. <laughs> this is a phenomenal piece. It's better than any cover Marvel or DC put out this month. <laughs> GJ, quit. Quit biting your tongue and spill the beans. I can't because I want you to read this particular moment. I will say it takes place on this big battle scene. And Chiron has to do something. I'll say this. Has to do something to boost the morale of the men because they're horrified by the black magic and the dark magic that the, the mages, if they really want to get down there, they can bring some horrible magic. Um, to to their enemies. And they're so frightened. They're terrified. You know, don't forget, these are regular men. They were slaves. You know, and they, they're, they're like, it's it's over. Like, like, we can't. Chiron does something, and then suddenly their morale is boosted. And then they grab their swords, and they shout, and they roar as one, and then they charge. And it's just what he does. I feel you guys will just love it. Yeah, let's get some lines here for the clouds. So if we do a second print, uh, oh, inspiring like a Frazetta piece. It's about to go down. Ah, yeah. That would have been the coolest poster on the block in the 90s. I know this is this is a really cool one. I may have to do something with this. You know, I may have to. Just may have to. Follow me. Iron wolves never die. 
Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll just do a dot more, and I don't want to add much more. I think uh, I want Chiron to still be the focus. If I add too much, it'll take away from that. Let's just do some more little white lines just to bring our attention. I'll tell you some particular moments just to give you a little tease. Not not of Blood Realm, but like stuff that inspired me was you know Julius Caesar's crossing of the Rubicon. You know, once once Caesar crossed over the Rubicon, that meant war. Civil war because uh, a legion was never or, or a, a, a I would say a not quite a magistrate, but um, someone in political office or any type of military position, could never cross an army over the Rubicon. It would mean civil war. So, And once you do that, there was absolutely no going back. No going back. So um, I, just, I just find that very powerful, moments like that in history. Caesar knew, you know, in that moment that once I cross, there is absolutely no going back. And his men knew that too. This means civil war against the Senate. And he crossed it. So, you know, you may see moments that are kind of inspired by that. A kind of... Once you cross this line, that's it. There's no going back. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, offer prints of this card. That would be cool. Ah, wow. Uh, Robert, your ca campaigns are always exciting, sir. Thanks for providing us readers amazing perks to satisfy our hobby. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding, DJ? I'm honored that you guys want to partake in this in my story and just read it and that the fact that these characters mean that much to you it's that's the uh, thank you thank you thank you there we go i wanted more light there we go that's it and that is it folks Is it? Yeah, it is a very exciting. I like his gesture. I like his pose too. Like you know, he's holding the shield. He's lifting that right, right in the center there, coming down at the slant, guiding you right here. He has the hint of the men. You know he means business, and he's giving an order. You know that that sword of flame means something. Uh, let's see. Uh, gotta watch Rome, Rob. Great scene where the Senate denounces Caesar and Mark Anthony doesn't realize he can call a veto. Cicero and the rest realize they've sealed their collective fate. Oh, I can't wait. I have to watch that. Maybe I'll start that tonight. Maybe I'll do that. I'll start that tonight. Yeah. You got me pumped. You got me pumped. Oh, weird. The screen's doing something weird again. Can't handle the, the warrior of light. I'm going to start that. I'm going to give that a shot tonight. All right, folks. Well, um, this was tremendous. Um, that was great, really. I felt good. I always feel good drawing Chiron. This is something about this character. I feel we need characters like this again, you know? All this deconstructing, it's just, it's just tiring. Just give me a hero. Give me something that, that, that I can follow, you know? Some, someone virtuous. Yeah, okay, Chiron falls and he makes mistakes, but you know what? At the end of the day, he still is virtuous. He has integrity. That's that's something that's very important to this character, you know? He falls, yeah, he gets back up. He is a man, right? But he maintains that integrity, and that's the most important thing. So, And boy, is he challenged, right? Even his... His faith and everything and his men and what he's doing. He's challenged big time. 
challenge, especially when we see in volume three what he goes through. And that's the thing. You're going to reread volume three right when you finish this and you're going to catch things. You're going to be like, oh, no, I didn't even think of that. And things that kind of correlate and mirror in the best way possible. So exciting. <laughs> so exciting. So, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for joining me uh, today. You guys absolutely rock. If you have not now, if you have not backed the campaign, back the campaign, help us get to, let's see, what are we? We're well, 51 away from the next goal. We, I think we're two, two backers away from 120. So back the campaign. We have 24 volumes left. Thank you. Thank you so much in advance. I will be back tomorrow drawing a commission with Tyler. So I believe he's going to draw the same scene as well, the resurrection scene. So I'm pretty sure he's going to do that too, but I'll... I'll I'll talk to him. But regardless, we're going to have a great discussion anyway. And see you. Thank you for that again. So exciting as always to be able to watch you live. Thank you, GJ. Take care, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care, everybody. And thank you. Bye-bye.